Hello guys, my name is Siddharth Minardo Cap and today we are going to talk about quintessence. In this video, we are going to discuss about quintessence and what is the importance of quantum quintessence. So first of all, I am going to answer the very specific question that why do we need quintessence? So let us first try to understand what is this the quintessence is all about and why do we require to have quintessence in our system? Now to answer that, we are going to first write down the axiom of general relativity for an example here, the xn can be written as integral d4x with square root of minus c and r over some kind of an kappa square and so on. And the plus, then we are going to write some kind of an xn4 matter. So this is Einstein-Hilbert equation where r is a Ricci scalar and g is the determinant of the metric and this is the metric. So we have already discussed about this um, xn for the general relativity. So this is called Einstein Hilbert action and this is going to tell you about the gravity part. This says that gravity is geometry and it tells it tells that how the space time is and it merges the four dimensional it talks about the four dimensional space time in which Einstein says that the space time are only one quantity. And if you do the variation of this action and try to understand what is what could be the equation of motion, then it came out to be g mu nu is equal to some kappa squared t mu nu. So what is this? This is actually field equation that you are getting from here. So Einstein only talked about what he talked about. He talked about the gravity as a manifestation of some curvature, manifestation of some geometry. And this geometry is encoded in this part g mu nu. Now he, he, he told that okay if you understand about the geometry and whatever the matter content is it is due to the matter content the geometry got bend up and as the geometry got bend up then geometry decides that how this object will actually flow or what could be the dynamics of this thing. So it means that g mu nu is actually telling you about r mu nu minus half g mu nu times r it's all about the curvature and in the right hand side it's all about the matter. But apparently, in Einstein's theory of relativity, the idea of geometry is given by this metric part or the geometry part. But T mu nu part, which is actually consist of energy density of the matter, it does not come in the theory, in the picture. Okay, you have to invoke what could be the matter. It could be some kind of an, any kind of stars, maybe black holes, maybe different different kind of solutions that may exist. But the thing is that T mu nu is not coming in the picture as the as dynamically this uh, gravity is coming as if uh, it is a curvature, it is a manifestation of space and time. So it means that the Einstein theory is incomplete while it while we are talking about the matter. So in order to understand the cosmology, that what could be the different different phase of the cosmology, you have to first tell that okay, what could be the matter that exists in our universe and based on the matter, how the whole universe will run out. So it means that this T menu is not coming just you know dynamically. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to first rely on the data that what could be the what could be your you know this T mu nu maybe vacuum or T mu nu maybe some kind of an matter content or maybe some kind of an fluid content or maybe some kind of an scalar field. Okay, so this this T mu nu is corresponds to matter part and from here we are getting that okay what could be um, T mu nu could be anything and from the observations we think that we have invoked that there is a, some kind of a cosmological constant that exists in our universe and because of this there is a dark energy and dark matter and so on. So that's why we are treating dark matter and dark dark matter is corresponds to this cos cosmological constant and dark energy sorry dark energy is corresponds to this cosmological constant and dark matter is some kind of an exotic fluid that we have already talked about. So that is the problem with Einstein's relativity. And how to sort out this T mu nu? So T mu nu can be find out from the quantum field theory. The quantum mechanics is tells us all about matter that electron, quarks, gluons and different different kind of matter we have the quantum field theory. But here we have the metric where we have the geometry. Geometry is given by g mu nu. And now we want to invoke this quantum field theory in this side, but they are not basically merging. They don't want to add up. Therefore, we are saying that the gravity and quantum mechanics, since they are not actually merging, therefore we need some higher theory which basically combines dynamically G, uh, Einstein's gravity and the matter content of the universe. 
So if you are a genius enough, then you can classically, uh, uh, you know, uh, think of something that, okay, this could be the higher dimensional theory of uh, Einstein's gravity, where dynamically we can just consist of matter and so on, but it is not possible. They are therefore, you know, people are uh, thinking about quantum gravity theory, okay, where they want to understand about the quantum nature of geometry and as well as they want to consist dynamically the matter part. So that is why we have to rely on that we are proposing something very different different kind of fluid or some different different kind of field therefore we required quintessence. So that is why we need quintessence. Now we are want to understand different thing. So what could be the quintessence field? How does it look like? We know we have already talked about equation of state. This equation of state tells you about that whatever the pressure and energy of the field that we have invoked. And from the lambda CDM model, we have seen that omega must be minus 1 and this is true from the observations. Correct. Now, if you if we using that our universe is homogeneous and isotropic which is labeled as FLRW space then this Einstein equation is actually giving you h square is uh, 3h square is proportional to some rho matter content and similarly 2h dot plus 3h square is equal to minus of p okay and uh, from if you are using this equation and try to uh, give here then what we can see that minus p and 2 is dot is equal to minus p plus rho okay now h dot is giving you the accelerating of some kind of a scale factor because h is the velocity that how something is propagating and h dot h is velocity and h dot is the producing acceleration so if you want to understand this h dot we want to produce acceleration therefore this p plus rho must be negative and if this p plus rho will be negative then and then only a dot becomes positive and we will have accelerating and that corresponds to dark energy we already know that energy density of any kind of component cannot be negative therefore it has to be positive so what else we need so the pressure can be negative therefore this pressure has to be less than this rho part okay and in such a way that it has to be negative so we now we require that we have to put we have to you know produce enough kind of pressure which must be negative so now we got an idea about this uh, team union that what could be team union okay now how to find the team union so for that purpose we know that lagrangian because xn is consist of lagrangian so s is equal to this is xn d4x and this is lagrangian density Therefore, Lagrangian is from classical mechanics, it is kinetic energy minus potential energy. And therefore, I want to know that if some kind of a field or some kind of an object having phi, phi, therefore its kinetic person will be d phi over dt. So I want that half phi dot square minus, let us say it has some kind of a potential, the self potential, okay. And uh, let us say it is phi square type, okay. So this has to be consist of this thing. Now, since we have already assumed that our universe must be homogeneous, therefore we are thinking that this there is kind of a field is filling the universe. The whole universe is filled with some kind of a field, which is basically a function of time and space because you know space is merged. Space means that we are x, y, z, and time is time. But since we have assumed that the universe is fully homogeneous and isotropic, therefore the field value at any point will be same and it only depends on the time means that how the universe is basically evolving we can write the lagrangian of it like half g mu nu the metric part d mu phi d nu phi and the potential energy can be written in terms of like potential energy is half of phi squared so phi squared means that the potential is looks like this one okay so in this this uh, you know uh, whatever the field we are taking it has some self kind of potential and this potential and from this potential they will it will decay or it will rise up anything is possible and from here we are saying that how the dynamics should play with this potential so that this will affect your uh, space time and from the space time you will get that okay h dot must be greater than zero 
So if we are now since we already know that g mu nu is a metric portion and it will consist of minus 1 minus uh, sorry 1 by a and so on okay. So if I am writing here g 0 0 d 0 phi d 0 phi plus half phi squared now g 0 0 is uh, nothing but minus half because g 0 is minus 1 and phi dot square. Now we cannot have d i phi d i d 0 phi means that d t okay zero component is corresponds to time component and plus half phi square now we have seen already seen that this half phi square has to be kind of determined it has to be negative plus and we are getting minus term therefore what we can do here we can write this einstein equation again d4 x square root of minus g and r over let's say come kappa is square minus of this uh, lagrangian and this lagrangian will become now half which is phi dot squared and minus half phi square okay because we want that this kinetic term must be positive okay so from here you can easily find out what could be the t mu nu and if we find out the zero component it will give us like half phi dot square plus v phi and uh, the pressure part will be half phi square minus v phi and if i want to find out the equation of a state which is p over rho which is came out to be phi dot square minus v phi over half phi dot square plus v phi. Now we demand that omega must be negative okay this has to be negative and let us say it has to be minus 1 when this is possible that this guy has to be equal to my negative. So what we are proposing that we are proposing that this field has less kinetic term. So this half phi square basically very very weaker than its potential which means that this is some kind of an potential which we have tried and this phi is rolling down to this potential is very slowly means that the uh, the time done time variance in this field is very 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 slow compared to its potential now if it is true then we can neglect these two terms and we have v phi over v of phi so if we take down any kind of this kind of scenario then we can have omega is minus one so which is actually producing dark energy and giving us the enough acceleration okay so that is the funda of complete quintessence and that is how we are actually not only uh, you know stop with quintessence we have some kinetic ksns okay kinetic field in which we have replaced phi dot square in terms of some non-linear terms we have another uh, different different exotic fluids some like lego, some logarithmic fluid or some kind of an chapelism gas so different different you know because we don't have any underlying theory from where matter and space time emerge automatically no we don't have therefore we have to rely on some our, our bit and we have to rely on the observation and from these observations we try to understand that what could be the dynamics and we are giving some kind of approximations and from there we try to find the perturbation in these fields we are calculating that what could be the power spectrum we will talk about it later on and then we will try to understand with some kind of observations like there are several observations like local Hubble uh, local Hubble rate or there is a CMB uh, CMB spectrum cosmic microwave background spectrum therefore there are different different plan different different data like uh, supernovae data some plan data and so on and from there we try to understand it what could be if there is a quintessence then what could be the field limit it has what would it, what are the parameters we are using and from there we are constraining those parameters and so on so that is the approach and that is why we need quintessence so we will begin our system from the conditions because you know as you can see that it is a very easy one and after that we will again model our you know matter part because you know we have fixed this part Einstein's general relativity part the gravity part structure is fixed what we are thinking about right now is that what could be the matter and uh, we because we don't have any kind of an, uh, concrete observations so for today it is enough and uh, we will see you later on thank you very much